stupid people. How can you, like, like, how do you read this and not just get insulted? Like, reading pretentious garbage like this is so upsetting to me. Like, you can say the same thing without looking like a douchebag. And then, of course, this. We think it's stupid art for stupid people, yet people paying millions for Jackson Pollock's absolute trash. I always go back to Jackson Pollock and Damien Hirst, but there's millions of others. These paintings make my corneas hurt. I'm ashamed that this Damien artist Hurst. lived in my former hometown. The George Mrs. W. Damien Bush Hurst. of art. Worthless. They make me want to puke. They are false works. They are awful. Simply awful. It belongs in the trash. It is stupid art for stupid people. The worst paintings I have ever seen, and they will haunt me for the next half an hour. Those are all real quotes from comments, reviews, and articles concerning one artist and his work. Gee, these paintings must be pretty bad then, It's huh? Damien Hirst, isn't it? What are they, it? pictures of babies eating each other alive? The scatological scribbles of a lunatic? No. These are the kinds of paintings what? those quotes are referring to. Now, if you're like me, you might be a bit confused. Why, yeah, why I, actually, yeah. Why these seemingly unremarkable paintings of cottages, one would <clears> usually <throat> see on the covers of jigsaw puzzles, so viciously hated by some people? In fact, not just hated, but accused of being dishonest, damaging to art and culture itself. These are works artists by suck. the late artist <laughs> Thomas Kincaid. God damn it. You can make a very good case that Thomas Kincaid was the most successful artist in the 21st century so far. His works can be seen on mugs, t-shirts, calendars, and probably somewhere in your grandmother's living room. Thomas Kincaid's own company claims his work can be seen in one out of every 20 American homes. And at the height of his career, his company generated $130 million Whoa. in sales in one year. Not now, I bad. can totally see how someone could dislike his work. Perhaps they find it too excessive in its sentimentality, or is garish, or perhaps they find it simply generic. But to capital H, lips. hate it. I admit, I was initially a bit confused by that. In fact, people hate the art and the man so much that in articles about the man's death, you can find such comments as these. I hate Thomas Kincaid with every fiber of my being. Our long Channel that energy to someone that deserves it, like Damien Hirst. with liking Kincaid's paintings, but, in my opinion, there is something wrong with people that like his paintings. Yeah, that's basically the same thing. The thing is that the people that buy this crap are ignorant morons from the southeast and midwest of the US. You know, the people responsible for electing George Bush, Jesus their opinions Christ. on art are about as valid as a Gibbons opinion on quantum physics. Sir or madam, I, I know this is I the internet, one but if you could kindly in the Mercy. remove your head from your own rectum, I think you'd be doing yourself a favor. What could have possibly prompted such venom Maybe from tier a few one wishing cottage will. paintings? What you'll find is that the reason for this hatred may have less to do with the art itself and more to do with matters of taste, the art world, and even as you saw in the last comment, politics. Today we'll learn about the many reasons to hate Well, this sounds Thomas interesting. Kincaid. I don't know why more people don't hate people like Damien Hirst and Jackson Pollock. Their work is the most awful dog shit shit ever. Thomas Kincaid was born into relative poverty in 1985 in California. He attended the University of California Berkeley and Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. Before college, he was known for having a natural talent for drawing and was mentored by Glenn Wessels, a wow, former college Glenn. professor of art who lived just a few hundred feet from his own home. Wessels would eventually encourage him to transfer to the College of Design in Pasadena. Before his business adventures, Kincaid worked in background painting for an animated film. As far as the actual technique goes, uh, for the most part we used a simple technical procedure. We'd just start out with a big wide brush and lay the thing in. Uh, very scrubby at first, and then as we went, we'd uh, gradually uh, tighten the strokes. Painting down. always impresses me, because it's so painting. fucking it's hard. Limited, because there was a number of paintings to be done, over a thousand for the film and traveled by freight train across the country sketching with James Gurney. When King I've got a pee. 20, uh, I can't hold it any longer. Well, this is a good frame to stop it on. That's a very wholesome picture of old Thomas Kincaid. Give me one second. I'll be right back. I'm back. Is it tier one disaster, the musical?
He reportedly experienced a Christian reawakening. These newfound oh. values seeped their way into his art, which now focused and on awesome. optimism, natural beauty, and inspirational settings. Kincaid was able to amass such profits from building up hundreds Blue Box. of Thomas Kincaid's signature galleries, which sprung up all over the country at their height and eventually spread internationally. These signature galleries sold high-quality digital reproductions, where one could have the option of having a specially trained assistant highlight the canvas-textured reproduction one was about to purchase. This highlighting consisted of the assistant adding small dots of color to give it detail and texture that was unique to that painting. That's the kind of a cool idea. Were also illuminated and decorated in a way totally opposite to the sterile white environments usually seen in other galleries. Yeah, that's very a cool. and homely atmosphere. Kincaid excelled at building his brand Maybe throughout some gummy every aspect prime egg roll. of the purchase. Thomas Kincaid was in the money-making business. All his art appealed to the masses and strayed away from any negative or even ambiguous themes. He had successfully commercialized his art to an extreme extent, and it worked. There are people who were uh, it looks passionate fine. about these paintings. Clearly, many are willing to pay for reproductions, and many collect them religiously. The people who buy them are glad to have them. They find comfort in them. Since 1994, Thomas Kincaid's company, Media Arts Group, has traded on the NASDAQ and then on the New York Stock Exchange, making Kincaid the only artist to be a small-cap equity issue. It is estimated his business brought in $100 million in revenue annually. Art Thomas is always Kincaid subjective. Was yeah, until it successful. comes to Damien Hirst or Jackson Pollock, then it is objectively dog shit. This hatred as just jealousy of his spectacular success, and I'm sure that's a reason for some. For others, it certainly goes deeper than that. When you go searching for what people think of his work, you'll find a lot of negative reviews that use the word kitsch. This word appears everywhere. Kitsch, kitsch, king of kitsch. But what is kitsch? My first vague understanding of the word was something that's popular but also poor quality. The Oxford Art Dictionary attempts to define it as objects or design considered to be in poor taste because of excessive garishness or sentimentality, but that might be too narrow. According to cultural critic and Walter Benjamin, <laughs> kitsch is, unlike art, a utilitarian object lacking all critical distance between object and observer. God, these people are so fucking pretentious, it hurts. It hurts. Effort. According to Sir Roger Scruton, kitsch is fake art, expressing fake emotions, whose purpose is to deceive the consumer into thinking he feels something deep and serious. Yes, unlike Jackson Pollock's work that really challenges the consumer to think about it. Just random fucking paint drippings. What was this guy's name? I want to look up what he likes. ...without intellectual effort. According to Sir Roger Scruton... Roger Scruton. More like Roger Scrotum, am I right? Let's see. Roger Scruton. Roger Scruton on being right from the intelligence squad. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. The right is what its members make it, uh, and they make it in a different way. What I was trying to say oh, was wait, that what? we don't actually make it through these movements like momentum and so on. We're not the, the fist-clenching type. We do know oh, is he talking about politics? Through civil association, through our belief in and love for the, the country that is ours, and I desire to protect... Oh, I misunderstood the title. That was like, like a Rick and Morty kind of thing, like... You're wrong if you don't like Rick and Morty. I want to see what kind of art he liked. Can't really find anything about it. There's a couple articles where he talks about art he doesn't like, but that's not super helpful. Pretty much any art that looks like it takes talent, people don't like in the art industry. I guarantee you Damien Hirst, Jackson Pollock, all of like your most famous artists, like more modern artists, I guess Jackson Pollock doesn't fit into that. I guarantee they couldn't draw a single person's face. They couldn't paint a single thing that looks like anything. It's just abstract dog shit that even a child could make. There's the prime bronze city. Hmm. 
Yeah, I can't find anything on like Roger Scruton, Scr Scruton approved for art. Thanks, three sub stone. Yeah, I remember Bob Ross was shit upon by most like fart sniffing artists back in the day. I do remember that. Again, anything that looks like it has any form or shape to it or anything that looks like it took time and effort is very frowned upon in the community. Kitsch is fake art expressing fake emotions whose purpose is to deceive the consumer into thinking he feels something deep and serious. I think it's quite a claim to say something expresses fake emotions, but it might give a better idea of what kitsch is. Even famous, well-established contemporary artists have been accused of using kitsch. My general understanding is art that is not challenging, not complex. But ultimately, the word is hard to define. Its vagueness allows it to be applied to a wide You've range come. of stuff. For and for that reason, oh, thank I you find for it inadequate to fully describe why people... Welcome, welcome. Thank you for the raid, James. Articles and reviews will also frequently... I hope you had a great stream. Garish, and hope you like dog shit art. ...and nauseatingly cheerful. All understandable reasons for disliking something, but even so, how does that translate from just mediocre art to art being a national nightmare? Thomas Kincaid has been like such a wholesome guy in Rockwell, mainly because of his appeal to American values and usually cheerful scenes. Some have even put both their work into the Bobbington? same dreaded category of kitsch, but I think a more fitting comparison is Bob Ross. The oh, boy wonder that appealed to large mainstream audiences. Both mostly consisted of landscapes without people, and both lives were even cut short at around the same age. Now, I love Bob Ross. I mean, who doesn't? But yeah, I how could really you not? call his work challenging. In fact, one can make the case that it is kitsch. No, the significance of Bob Ross is not really his art, but the hundreds of PBS videos he made painting Damn. that art. Bob Ross was able to reach millions of people and inspire them to pursue oil painting through easy to follow a la prima techniques and the soothing earnest commentary that works both as a tutorial and as relaxing meditation. I've had a really cool idea for a while. Someone in the chat just reminded me of this. I thought it would be a really interesting idea if I did like some dog shitty Damien Hurst Jackson Pollock style art under a pseudonym and then just had like a really wealthy person I know buy it for an absurd amount and I just give the money back obviously but making headlines just to get that name out there and see if I could get some real genuine stupid rich assholes to buy my work. So I was wondering, it's something I've been thinking about doing but I need to find who would do it. I was going to try and ask Gronk about it but I just feel like he really wouldn't. I, I don't think he'd want to. But I really think it's a good idea because most of these big artists like Damien Hirst are big because they know rich people that buy the fucking art from them for money laundering purposes. And I feel like you can replicate that if you just know someone with a lot of money. Isn't that illegal? Yep. But that's how all big modern artists start. Look up Damien Hirst's history. He doesn't even make the art himself anymore. He has people paint the polka dots for him. But he sells it as his to people he already knows. I was going to look it up, but now I don't feel like going through Damien Hurst's fucking big biography anymore. Thanks to the resub, AJ. Extremely valuable. Both Thomas Kincaid and Bob Ross sought to comfort their audiences through painting. However, when it came to them as people, Thomas Kincaid was no Bob Ross. Thomas Kincaid was very vain. He branded himself as Thomas Kincaid. The painter of light. Wouldn't saying this out loud. Fuck Look, you in the future. You like no, word, you'd never know it's me. I'd have a cool pseudonym. Not something I would consider a remarkable like use of light. Burst. These guys are painters of light, not Thomas Kincaid. He's also said things like, "God is my art agent," and "We have a grassroots movement emerging in my art and in the country." And there's 10 million people out there that, if I give the word, will go out and pick it any museum I want them to. In one case, he bet journalist Susan Orlean a million dollars that a major museum would hold a Thomas Kincaid retrospective in his lifetime. No. Thomas Kincaid was also not shy to talk about his Christian Pope? beliefs and conservative family values. The prominent light so often seen in his paintings, he said, represented the light of God penetrating the darkness. 
as well as Jesus' light of the world. He quite openly resented the elitist art world, bitch, professor. insisting that his work was earthquake. uplifting and a positive influence on the world, while modern art was nihilistic and ugly. In one interview, he said, The number one quote critics give me is, Tom, your work is irrelevant. Oof. Now that's a fascinating, fascinating comment. Yes, irrelevant to the little subculture, this microculture of modern art. But here's the point. My art is relevant because it's relevant to 10 million people. That makes me the most relevant artist in this culture, not the least, because I'm relevant to real people. Thomas Kincaid... Yeah, he doesn't seem super likable. ...frequently engaged in shady business practices such as defrauding authorized Kincaid dealers and exploiting their Christianity to up. get them into the Kincaid business by dressing it up as a religious opportunity, all the while getting them to take on unreasonable amounts of Kincaid's work at fixed prices. Many gallery owners claimed Kincaid had ruined them financially in the name of God. <laughs> Kincaid dismissed these accusations while also... It is what God would want, I Kincaid think. Kincaid was also an alcoholic. Arkham. And as his businesses began to decline, he engaged tier one. frequently in drunken episodes Crandall and where he was prone to cursing, heckling performers, one accusation of groping, urinating on a Winnie the Pooh statue while mm -hmm. yelling, This one's for you, Walt, which I don't even think that one's bad. That's hilarious. That's pretty cool, actually. Driving, which is less hilarious. He's even wearing a Jackson Pollock shirt. on April 6, 2012, he was killed by an accidental overdose of Valium and alcohol. Wow. Even after his death, a legal battle over his estate between his estranged wife and girlfriend took place, all prompted from these drunken, barely comprehensible wills. Eventually, both parties settled out of court. These events are made even more ironic just by going onto YouTube and watching some of the painting demonstration <laughs> videos he made before his death. The ones where he actually explains his techniques are fine and decently informative, but on others, the man can't do two minutes of actual painting without cutting it off and giving a speech about how God inspired him and how we should all be looking toward the light or something. Religious beliefs aside, well, are you yeah, trying to you give know. an informative peek into your process, or are you just going to preach to the audience? Considering how interested he was in maintaining his positive image and Christian values, my guess is the latter. If you're still wondering how people could hate a Thomas Kincaid artwork for political reasons, well, it's because the artist himself politicized them. He fueled the rift between the art world and people outside of it. And to be fair, it seems some of the art world fueled this conflict as well. And oh boy, does Thomas Kincaid's opposition get political. That's how you can get articles like Thomas Kincaid, the George W. Bush of art. Their reasoning? Kincaid, like Bush, peddled a falsely simplified image of the world, and that the same bad taste that made people hmm. invest in fraudulent galleries also elected George Bush and sent their children off to oh, die in the oh, war. Okay. Even another article titled <laughs> Bro, it's a jigsaw Bush puzzle a painting painter than Thomas Kincaid. Which argues Man's looking for a fucking intricate view of the world that challenges thought process with a fucking words, jigsaw puzzle. Because they are more inventive and emotionally resonant. As Elisa Bennett quite bitterly explains in her article, A Dream from Christmas Cottage, though Kincaid's paintings often pander to evangelical Christianity, which is probably the most legitimate reason to hate them, the primary reason that the art world has erected aesthetic and conceptual barriers around him, is one that echoes Clement Greensburg's 80-year-old essay on the avant-garde and kitsch. We think it's stupid art for stupid people. How can that you, like... Like, how do you read this and not just get insulted? Like, reading pretentious garbage like this is so upsetting to me. Like, you can say the same thing without looking like a douchebag. And then, of course, this. We think it's stupid art for stupid people, yet people paying millions for Jackson Pollock's absolute trash. I always go back to Jackson Pollock and Damien Hirst, but there's millions of others. 80-year-old essay on the avant-garde and kitsch. We think it's stupid art for stupid people. That is, those who are too intellectually flabby to spot the difference between the real and a charlatan's flattened oh approximation God. of it. <laughs> yes, to some, hating a Thomas Kincaid painting has political dimensions to it. But I think a slightly more charitable explanation that is less political and more merit-based comes from the art critic Jerry Saltz. 
The reason hey, Jerry. the art world doesn't love Kincaid isn't that it hates love, life, goodness, or God. We may be silly or soulless or whatever, but we don't automatically hate things with faith and love or that other people love. The reason the but art Hearst world did doesn't love Kincaid he did is crush because it. none, it looked not good. one of his ideas about subject matter, surface, color, composition, touch, scale, form, or skill is remotely original. This might be the most succinct and clear explanation of an aspect of why some people hate his art. It was something I suspected from the beginning, but it was just never actually written down clearly until this man finally gave a beautifully specific reason. Now I agree, in fact, that they are unoriginal in those aspects. But, and I know this is like a cardinal sin according to art critics, I don't hate Kincaid's art. There are some paintings I like. Some I wouldn't mind having a print of, quite a few I find excessive, and quite a few I find downright horrendous. But I don't hate everything he has ever painted. People often insult Kincaid's work by calling them greeting card illustrations. Well, greeting cards need illustrations, don't they? Or else they would just be <laughs> white pieces of folded paper with True text. checkmate. If you hate them or love them, his paintings fit that purpose. You aren't going to find academic history paintings or basquet art on get well soon cards. That would be tonally incongruous. But a cozy cottage? If the man had just accepted that his art wasn't going to be seen in high class museums, maybe the kind of vicious hatred for his art from the art world still seen today. I am curious, what gets seen in high class museums now? I'm pretty sure all of it is that super trash thing like a banana tape to a wall or like Banksy's balloon picture, stuff like that. Let me see. What well, is like the most modern art exhibition that just happened? There's got to be something for 2021. Let's see, exhibit. Here we go. Top art exhibitions of 2021. Let me see what I see. Okay, I'll just allow some cookies. All right, let's go through it. This is a recent one. Mm hmm that 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 looks about right oh my fucking god oh this isn't all just like paintings and stuff I was looking for like paintings this looks cool what is this a full Van Gogh thing oh this oh this okay I'm, I'm looking at the wrong stuff this is just art ex exhibits going on in 2021 I wanted to see art on display at an exhibit. Sorry, I see what's going on now. That was confusing. Um, I don't know what to look for then. Maybe this. Yeah, the Van Gogh thing seems cool. That did look cool. Oh yeah, I'll try that. Maybe just like a museum or something. Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth. Oh, here we go. They even have a tab for the exhibitions, I think. And then there's different categories. Uh, this, uh, I guess this. No, this is booking an appointment. Jesus Christ. Someone just tell me something. Surely someone knows the name of like some kind of art museum that I can look at what the fuck gets displayed there in like 2021. Like, a, like an art tour or something. MoMA. Man, you fucking assholes just googled Modern Art Museum, didn't you? And the first one that comes up is MoMA.org. This is like a database of just a bunch of different ones. I, I'm looking for like an actual exhibition that went on with a bunch of art displayed in it or sold in it. You going to bed? Alright, come say goodnight in just a sec. San Francisco MoMA? Okay, let's try that. 
Jesus. Okay, this seems easy to navigate, I think. Nope, this is booking an appointment again. This is so hard. Well, I mean, even on just their homepage, like their art collection here is kind of ass. Looks like these kids did this. Looks like they vandalized an art piece, but this is apparently the piece that's on display. Like this is the cool art, I guess. This is just a projector in some concert. That is thought provoking. I don't know if this is like a used hand towel or something like they dumped some kind of staining liquid on it. Oh. Yeah, it's so hard to like actually find one of these goddamn art museums that just display some of the art. Thanks to some Harry boy. Contemporary art daily. This is a website though. Okay, this is pretty fucking goofy. This this isn't really what I was looking for. Oh my god, this is pretty goofy though. Okay, here. It's pretty cool. <laughs> very nice. That, that that did come out very good. Wow, we ah. Wow, <laughs> they're doing a good job here. Ah, uh -huh. sewing as the world ends. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Thanks to the five gift subs, Harry boy. I appreciate that. Yeah, I want to visit an art museum. To be honest, whoa. I wish that I had sailed the darkened seas. You gotta really stop and digest this one, actually. There's a, there's a lot going on here. It's everything that it's not saying. And that's what makes it so powerful. Damn. You can really feel the emotion in each stroke of the crayon. The colored charcoal against the canvas. I didn't ask your opinion. Flags for countries that don't exist, but bodies that do. Okay. Whoa. Tenderness. It's Pickle Rick caught in between a couple kissing, I guess. Wow. These are deep, damn. Like, you can feel the tenderness. <laughs> yeah, this, this pretty much sums up most art mu uh, exhibits, I imagine. <laughs> uh, here's some canvases that uh, there's like some scribbles on it somewhere in there. I don't know, just hanging up, put like 50 grand on it. Someone's going to buy it. Wow, this looks fun. That, that does look good. Fuck, it really makes you think. This is like when Squidward went to that place to be all alone. But this is like much more pretentious and like it like insulting. Damn. This shit really does speak to the soul. Exit tier one ping juice in the bits kill command. This is just a bunch of boxes. <laughs> Merlin, you've outdone yourself here. Exquisite. Like, you, you have to ask yourself, what's in those boxes? Are we purchasing too much? It, it's a display of excess. And you see how the boxes aren't all lined up the same? There's a pattern to it. There's order in the chaos. Oh, it's beautiful. And then you also have to wonder who... 
packed these boxes? Is it Amazon workers that are miserable and you can feel the hate? Is it someone like maybe a, a home business with a family that packed the... There's just so many things you have to ask yourself. This really is a challenging piece. Mm. Magnifique. Well done, Merlin. I don't know what I'm looking at. This is, is this part of it? Like this pubic hair here? Like glued to a picture? I don't know what that is. I, I, again, I, I don't know what I'm, is this evidence in like a crime scene or something? I don't understand. It's a, a melting seal. Is that a video suggestion? Just in just a minute, in just a minute. I need to see those big T's. That sounds great. What the fuck? They drew the hands like I draw hands when playing Scribble. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my God. No sun. They actually just bought a shower curtain. A couple of them. You have to wonder what's on the other side of the curtain. Oh, this one actually looks like there's some effort in there. Okay. There's something. This is weird, but at least it takes talent to make this. There we go. Back to back, not awful pieces. It is it is weird though. But at the very least, it's not an easy thing to do, like everything else. Like this. <laughs> this is called Diana. <laughs> it's just a fucking plant. Oh my god, they bought a potted plant from Walmart <laughs> and hung it in the art museum. Jesus fucking Christ. Diana, you clumsy slut. What are you doing? What are you doing here, huh? Get out of the art museum, huh? This is just so, this is so fucking interesting to me. It's just an old gun that they came on, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Again, at least this takes some talent to make this. But it is very goofy. Ah, here we go. Speaking of talent. Hey, look. Here's some empty pieces of paper. With some orange. Thanks the resub, Danny. For an Eric Andre skit, they had a really obvious fake art setup that was meant to be destroyed and nobody even noticed. I think I remember that, vaguely. There's been a couple people that have done that. I remember, I don't remember who, but someone set up an art exhibit that was open to the public and it was just nothing. It was just an empty white room and that was the art. And people went in there and were taking pictures and losing their mind over it. Over it. Well, this was easy. He just took a picture outside of his window. He's got a nice house and he's flexing. This is so interesting to me. Holy shit. Okay, I, I'm going to be scrolling for fucking hours if I keep going. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to the videos. Jesus Christ. Art, like modern art is one of the most bafflingly outrageous things to me and the thing is i never see anyone defend it i literally never see anybody online defend it that isn't also laundering money with art themselves like it, it blows my fucking mind nowhere on the internet do i see anyone like no charlie actually damien Hurst pieces are pretty thought-provoking those pills kind of changed my life when i saw it nobody says that but like the pretentious weird art world where everyone's super rich and dumb defends it I'm going to go say goodnight to Tiana real quick. I'll be right back. And thanks to the resub super.
Alright, I'm ready. Thanks for your sub gold, Gregory. Woman buys invisible art. Oh, I already know that one. Thanks for the resub, Fluffy. Yeah, a guy sold an invisible statue recently for 18 grand. Would be reduced. I think people can be overly critical of his art, but the man also fueled that conflict. What is Thomas Kincaid's legacy? Can a man be defined by his worst attributes? Was he really just a hack that, that sounds used cool, orange. soothing images to swindle Can't people out of their tees. money? Or Just was he a flawed businessman of faith that produced art that may not be wholly original, but tried to instill some sort of simple beauty in an ugly world, who in moments of weakness succumbed to his worst tendencies? I can't really give you a good answer, but Kincaid will certainly not be the last of his kind. John McNaughton has been described as the Thomas Kincaid of Christian nationalism. His paintings are some Ooh. of the most overtly political and excessive oil paintings out there. And like Kincaid, they are technically <laughs> competent. I wouldn't say they are breathtakingly skillful, but he's probably a better painter than most people. Now, whether you agree or disagree politically, you have to admit that these paintings are a bit much. As in, so they are extremely dramatic and far from subtle in their messages. But it's still art. In the resub in fact, cape. Not only is it art, it's fascinating art. It reveals the inner psyche of the artist and the zeitgeist of large swaths of the American population. These paintings aren't just some crude Photoshop that your grandpa shared on Facebook. These are huge canvases that required technical skill, Tour of planning, Portland Art and Gallery. Ooh, they that contain sounds all nice. the nuance of political cartoons, but upgraded to far more detailed, loosely realistic paintings. They are also, by definition, propaganda. In his work, Legacy <laughs> of Hope, he combines dozens of figures from history together, comforting Donald Trump, what I suppose. The fuck? Many who would downright hate each other. And whether you agree with their messages or not, you have to admit they are ripe for meme material. And I don't know about you, but I think that has a value on its own. I also find this quote from McNaughton quite fascinating. I'm just honestly a little perplexed. I have no idea where buyers are hanging them. I just know I sell a ton. Sometimes I'm shocked at how many I sell. That one I told you about, Obama burning the Constitution. When I painted it, I worried, this thing is just hideous. Why would anybody hang that in their living room? <laughs> it's not, he says, the kind of warm, happy work people typically want in their homes. This is where McNaughton and Kincaid diverge. McNaughton does not seem to be as interested in making money, and at least appears to have some self-awareness that his work will likely not be accepted as high art. However, McNaughton may be a sign of something greater. Maybe Kincaid will Swayze? eventually win his museum bet, but not in his lifetime. In some bizarre twist of fate, museums of the future may display his work in the context of the beginning of a movement of populist conservative art. They may be seen as not aesthetically or emotionally significant, but historically significant. And who knows, maybe the tides of the art world will change and Thomas Kincaid's work will be seen in a new respectable light. I have my doubts, but art critics have been wrong before. Unlike others, apparently, I cannot bring myself to feel joy in this man's death. The life of Thomas Kincaid is a life of tragedy. The man had talent, <clears throat> and dishonest or not, attempted to bring some sort of positivity into the world, but was stunted by yeah. greed and mass appeal. It he seems he wanted to be misguided. loved by everyone, and when he wasn't, he turned hostile. He preached about family values and God, and yet endangered others, was killed prematurely by the hand of his own addiction, and left his family fighting for his legacy because of his failed relationships. His brand was one of optimism, faith, and comfort. His paintings were serene, peaceful, Thanks perfect scenes cosmic. without pain or suffering. Ironically, his life was anything but. Behind the artificiality of these idyllic scenes is the all-too-real reality of human folly. That was a very nice video. That was 